<laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, welcome back to another um, interview session on the Leadership Lounge. Um, just wanted to give a really quick introduction if you're here for the first time of what the ELLC it's, is the European Leaders Learning Community. And um, it's just a, a platform for us within YWAM to be connecting with other leaders and as well have helpful resources that allow us to grow as leaders. We're wanting to continue to grow, um, not just function as leaders, but to thrive and to be people who love um, what we do. We're going, the people that we're leading. Um, that's who we are. There's a lot of different um, uh, resources that you can have access to, whether it's the LDX talks, the lounge conversations, different articles that uh, come up from different leaders who have been in the field and have experience in these topics. We have a topic every month, and this month's topic is the art of reflection and self-awareness. So we're looking forward to this last topic um, before we jump into the new year. But we do have a special guest. Who is our guest, Tova? Who is our guest? Mm -hmm. It is Mr. Johan Alexanderson. Uh, who is in Harpenden right now, and I'm self-aware enough that I need to put it. That's right. I don't know. Right. Is that cool? Yeah. I'm not cool. sure. It does not, doesn't quite work the same with you guys. No, it just looks like an old lady. It doesn't work. No? no? Okay. This is the pole. That's right. Yeah. No, we're so happy to have you with us, Johan. Of course, you are usually one of the co-presenters in the Leadership Lounge, but um, we basically asked you because... I know that some of the people you follow that are a little bit in another age bracket, uh, it's people like Fiona Gifford, uh, it's like uh, Matt Rollins, you know, people that also work with this being self-aware and reflecting and mirroring people. And mm -hmm. and uh, I think you're pretty good at it as a, as a younger version. So we thought, let, let's go with you. Uh, but Johan, I have known you since 2007. We worked uh, in Sweden, resting us together. And uh, after not too, too long, you ended up on the leadership uh, team as well there. And it was just a privilege to work with you. Uh, and where that skill, um, I, I remember thinking of that back then, you know, where you were, you're still a young man, but you are a, a younger man. I thought this is way beyond, you know, of uh, that both the self-awareness and your, your skill in discipleship and your people skill, uh, it was like uh, you could have been 20 years older, you know, with that type of experience or that type of actually self-awareness and reflection that you could do with people. Mm -hmm. So back then as well, when, uh, when I worked with you, um, I remember you saying, give me the hard cases, the difficult people cases. You just love dealing with those difficult ones and, and I heavily gave them to you both because I trusted you you know but uh, but you were so good at it mm. at uh, really getting to the core of things so I think you're a master discipler uh, and uh, also have worked for many years with the DTS and I think yeah. you still have a finger in the DTS I think it's like that's part of who you are and um, you train you train trainers as well and you're also married so you have four small ones that you're training at home, uh, four, four small children. I forget the age. How old are they now? You're... One and a half till eight, eight, nine, maybe nine. <laughs> 13, <laughs> the first one was born, whatever that was. Okay, right. Um, and uh, just uh, adorable children. Um, love seeing you as a father there as well, you know, in that sense. Uh, but you work, I, I don't know if you still do, but you have worked with the DTS Center. Um, yeah. and, uh, and with the master's program, the one-year program, you have out of Harpenden as well. So the well, master's not the program. one-year program yet. yet. Not the one-year program yet, but it might be a prophecy. So who knows? Uh, it could be, you know. So uh, the master's in discipleship and spiritual formation. So mm -hmm. we are so happy to have you on that side of the table, you know, this time. Yeah. So thank you. I'm very glad to be here. It's going to be great. But just one question next before we dive into our, to our questions that we have prepared for you. It is, what made you join this mission and why are you still here? I mean, what has kept you here in this mission apart from the call of God? Ah, 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Reese's. Um, that's a great question. Thank you. That's a very kind introduction. I'll uh, I'll try to live up to that. Um, uh, but, but, but what brought me into the mission? Uh, I think it, on the bigger picture, I I think I had a mission's calling since I was fourteen. Whether I nurtured that mission calling or not, that that was always alive in me, no matter what choices I made before my DTS. But then I think I found something in, in YWAM that I personally had missed seeing in my church or in, in other church contexts that I have grown up in. And I think it's that intentionality of discipleship and that how, how God is allowed, how God was allowed to be a part of the whole life of the people that I was around. And that was very impactful. And then there's probably a tons of other reasons uh, that I'm not aware of. Yeah, <laughs> that that pulled me in, and and staying in YWAM. Um, I mean, my call is discipleship, and I think passion is to see people grow in God, in themselves, with others, and with God, uh, in all different sorts of ways, and it just never gets boring. So, cool. Yeah, that's why I actually forgot here. to say one thing that I wanted to say about you, Johan, as well. That is, of course, that you're part of leadership in Harpenden now. And That's very right. quickly got into that, you know, so you and another co-leader. Yes. Um, and then before YRAM as well, you were into acting and singing. So I That's love right. being in worship meetings with you right. because I just hear you belt from the back or front, you know. So I was thinking even with uh, self-awareness, like in acting, you were kind of mirroring or you were trying to, mm. you know, there must be some understanding about that in acting as well. So. Yeah, I definitely think so. And I, it's because a, it's a self-reflection. It's an interest in people and yourself and understanding how your emotions works and stuff like that to be a good actor. So I think there's definitely something with that that you need to grow in. Yeah, cool. Yeah. What were you going for in acting, by the way? Sorry? You wanting to be that uh, you know, superhero or were you in uh -huh. like I was into musical theater. That was my that was my aim. So I I just wanted to be on stage and sing. All right. Not dance though. I don't like the dancing musicals. I don't like cats and hair and those ones. I like more like Le Miserable, Phantom of the Opera, you know, the stuff where you can get away with very little dancing. <laughs> very cool. <Yeah. laughs> Sorry, I had to ask that. Go ahead, Tova. You no, know, no, no, you can you can go ahead now. <laughs> um looking at let's dive into self um awareness and reflection looking at it right i mean you are in a leadership position but regardless of of the leadership position reflection and self awareness is um is a key element to de development it of is. an individual development of of who we are i mean in staying true as well to who we are um would you say that reflection and self awareness um has played a big part in is in, in in strengthening who you are uh yes yes it definitely has i mean i don't i don't think i mean in the bigger picture i think self-awareness is about identity mm -hmm. and it's about knowing yourself for who you are and who you're not so the, the self-awareness label on it uh, so i i would say in, in a bigger picture it's identity and the bible says that god will oppose the proud and he will lift up the humble so i would say it starts there and self-awareness i mean i cannot um, maybe as we go along i'll remember stories but self-awareness has saved me a billion times in my leadership journey because i also think self-awareness is about asking questions it's about asking right. yourself questions and asking other questions and it's it's about training yourself over time to understand why you feel certain things and how you react when you feel things and that in any heightened situation and you have a lot of heightened situation in leadership like wow. conflicts and conversations and stuff like that that you really need to where it's really fruitful to understand how you look like or how you act when you're stressed and angry or so yeah. on. Absolutely. So yeah, it's been very essential. In leadership, you said we get a lot of that definitely in YWAM leadership as well. 
it's the relational aspect um, that, uh, yeah, that it comes out in of who we actually are. Um, yeah. What are what are some traits um, of a reflective or self aware person that you can catch in a person, right? Um, that yeah. you can identify having seen it in your own life. Um, I think some traits for someone who's self-reflective. I mean, first of all, humility. Uh, what do you say? Slow to speak, quick yeah. to listen, fairly good at asking questions. I would say someone who's self-reflective is naturally curious. Like there's a, there's just a natural curiosity of understanding. I think there's some sort of pursuit of truth in there, you know, fear of the Lord, like you... You, you are more concerned about what's right rather than being right, which can right. be two very different things. Yep. Um, uh, I would say people with high self-awareness are, are keeping a certain level of, of high relationalness. That's not a word, but they keep relationships in their life and, and they nurture relationships and you can, and you can see in kind of in an intentional way uh -huh. and not to not too too picky with who they have a relationship with mm -hmm. yeah that's not based on any necessarily bible thing but that will be some of my reflections in terms of some of those are but that last one i think is more something that i feel i've observed yeah 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 no it's good a lot of the ones that you said out of relationship um but, but as well the traits are perhaps more beneficial traits yeah it, 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 it as well can depend on okay is can someone be over reflective and what are the negative sides of being over reflective? Have you, have you in your journey of discipling people and you're heavily involved in discipleship, how have you seen that um, not go so well? Yeah. I mean, I think it's this thing of a flight and response, flight and fight response. Like a, a, you're under reflective or you're over reflective. And I think both are some sort of like defense mechanism by being over reflective you're also being overly dismissive of yourself and you're being overly undermining of yourself for the benefit of others but again that's not also necessarily find truth uh, in the end and it, it doesn't create appropriate tension you know if you listen to matt rollins and other things um, but i really feel that it's an over reflectiveness can create passivity and insecurity and i would say that would be my my tendency like my my fault behavior would be that i'm too reflective or too analytical of relationships so i don't move into action or or dare to do something yeah so that's definitely a a, a pitfall to be over reflective and and it's also it depends on like you always need to work these three things through a bit because it depends on self-awareness self-reflective people some people say that self-awareness is bad and self-reflective is good in the end i think it's all semantics uh but or maybe it's not maybe there are some definitions but in the end we also live and breathe with people so we need to work with the definitions they're trying to um that they're working with but yeah you mm -hmm. can definitely be too self-reflective mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I was okay. actually just looking up, sorry, Caleb, I, I was just looking up, you know, just um, just before this meeting, um, like, um, what would one um, um, way of describing the self-awareness, what would that be, you know, defining it? And uh, someone said it's the experience of one's own personality or individuality. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, you like that? Uh, so it is a so. Self-awareness is the ability to focus on yourself and how your actions, thoughts, or emotions do or don't align with your internal standards. Yeah, it's great. Love that. Yeah, cool. I think that highlights that you like in the end it's identity because it's it's relying on your internal compass that you're using. And I think there's no there's no good self-reflection without dying to self and fear of the Lord, you know. So Maybe we can say the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all self-awareness, you know? <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> you can always land on that. Yeah. I'm curious um, towards, you know, we just talked about positive traits and some traits that maybe if we do too much uh, that are not beneficial to us of how 
what, how people can find where they are. Not that it's about making sure that we know um, what side we're on, but in order to be a better person and a leader, how was your journey of discovering where you were um, in order for you for uh, to become positive in your leadership? Um, as in like how I learned self-reflectiveness when it's good and when it's bad type of thing? Yep. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think one thing is just life. Like you kind of just, because we try to, sometimes we try, I don't know if it's something I've just become much more aware of lately, or if it's, if it's our cultural climate right now, or maybe it's a little bit of both, but I feel we're, we're very easy to theorize about our growth and about ourselves and about our experiences. And we're very good at, at wanting to label ourselves how we want to be. Mm. But there is no such thing unless, like you, you just won't discover yourself unless you give yourself into situations where you learn. And I think there's no other place than in places of risk where you might be, I don't know, embarrassed, called out, your weakness revealed, where you just see yourself. And that's also where you will learn when you're being too self-reflective uh, over something. So. I think you really need to just live life. I mean, that's why I think DTS staffing as a as a leadership development thing is amazing. Because if you're not self-aware and self-reflective when you lead a team on outreach, you will have a really difficult outreach. Yeah. And you've seen it over and over again. Leaders that struggle with it. Like everyone struggles with the degree because we're on a journey, right? But the ones that really struggle, they also struggle to connect with their team and how they reflect on others. Um, I don't know if that really answering the question, but no, it's good. It's good to get the, th the thought process um, into it because I think the concept of even reflection and self awareness, um, people don't know where to find themselves and can yeah. uh, and 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 they can find themselves. In order to be a good leader, I need to do so and so. But it's really finding your own self and where you are on that spectrum so that you can. Um, position it um, for it to benefit your leadership and others in that. But um, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. And you need others. You cannot do it on your own. Yeah. It's not a self self awareness, doesn't come out of only self reflection. It comes in others' reflection right. too. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you can have this picture of your grandiose picture of yourself, or not even grandiose, just inaccurate picture of yourself. And it's yep. not until you're with people over a period of time that that really either is affirmed or unaffirmed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And maybe actually on that note, Johan, I've been thinking of, I think there is a bit of a nicism <laughs> in, in, in Christianity or maybe especially in charismatic circles, you know, it's like instead of at times speaking the truth in love, you just say what is nice to say and you just focus on, on the nice things instead of being yeah. also um, constructive, critical, you know, if you can say it like that. So yeah. um, do you would you say that we Christians at times are too caught up in being nice and encouraging um, that we fail to speak the truth in love? Yeah. And therefore, yeah. And, and therefore steal actually growth and self-awareness of another person? Yes. I mean, I think so. I think it goes both ways. I've seen both, particularly yeah. in charismatic circles. I've yeah. seen both nicism, but I've also seen the, like, we are not going to spare anyone's feelings uh, and calling each other out. And it's in the tension uh, <laughs> we need to find the answer. No, but, but I mean, I think because we're, we're called to be uh, loving and kind and graceful. Yeah, I, I do think that that's a tendency for us and particularly when we want to keep relationships and particularly in YWAM where we live and work in the same place and we kind of encourage a, a highly relational environment where other contexts might separate work and personal. Mm -hmm. We don't do that. We, we really want to mix it and that makes life really com uh, complicated and I do think we we can fall under the the problem of of false safety because mm -hmm. we're we don't want to speak things. And the thing is, it's there are different layers of honesty with one another and different layers of 
self-reflection and it's it's hitting the self the depth of someone or something that hurts a little bit to yeah. be aware of it because if there's no pain in giving something up you probably didn't really have a problem with it yeah. Yeah. and that's a little bit the catch-22 that you need a safe enough environment where you can bring up things that might be hurtful in the moment but then something you can work through through relationship as you're as you're unpacking it mm-hmm. um but yes, I mean, I, I think I've been in YWAM contexts more than one where there's just false safety because everyone is just nice. Uh, or I would say they are not nice enough or loving enough to call each other out uh, because it's unloving not to call each other. We need to get it out of our heads that is not loving, like rather the opposite. It's, yeah. it's yeah. the greatest sin to let someone else move in their own sin. So uh, it's actually not a safe environment. It's an unsafe environment, then, isn't oh, it? The truth is not known. Yeah. Like with everything, it's a short-term relief for a long-term yeah, yeah, yeah. recovery. Yeah, so it's it's hard in the moment. But of course, you also need to, like, it's a dynamic thing. So you need to gauge your relational capital and, like, where are we at as a team? So you don't just go with the sledgehammer and go in and, like, oh, you suck at this, you suck at this. Um, but then again, yeah. It's a bit dynamic and you need to work with, some people can just go in. I've been with personalities. They just kind of go in as a sledgehammer. And for some reason, people are like, oh, okay, I'll work on that. Versus other do the same thing. And it just kind of makes things hurtful and, and difficult. Mm-hmm. So there's a then skill in communication in the midst of it, isn't it? Very yeah. much. It's not enough to just know. Yeah. So, yeah. And anointing. I, I firmly believe there's just anointing. Yeah, yeah. And, and people, and I think on that, of bringing stuff up, it's really also, people will know if you care for them or not. Yeah. And it's not so much in the words that we use all the time, as much as it is our heart's attitude. And and we will leap. Like, I think it's Fiona talks about that. Like, we leap what's in our heart. Mm-hmm. And if there's any sort of resentment or annoyance, frustration, anger, if mm-hmm. that's not processed properly before you bring something up with someone, it, it will leak. Yeah. yeah. <gasps> We really do need each other. I think you were mentioning it earlier. Mm. Self-reflection um, just with ourselves is not full self-reflection, right? I think we need other people. We need other um, input in that safe environment. Um, I was curious if you have a point of reference as a person is going through self-reflection, um, going through self-awareness, if there is a point of reference that perhaps you use um, that helps um, have the, bring the healthiness of self-reflection and, and, and and to produce the the most fruit from it. Do you have some sort of of reference point that you're always going back to perhaps who you were before or progression of yourself? Wow. Um, That's a good question. Mm. yeah there are a couple of things i think one thing so i'm i'm the biggest praiser and the biggest hater when it comes to personality tests and self-assessments where i do think they're really good where i do think that's the purpose part of the purpose of them is for me to help to self-reflect right so uh, myers-briggs for example like i think it's really good i'm i'm strong introvert i'm a high on the introvert spectrum you know not antisocial just an introvert two different things um but but that helps me you know how i engage with people it has me reflect how what does my face look like and how welcoming am i how warm am i because i really need to work on being warm right with strangers you know because i just don't have that naturally like others so personality tests and, and having done a couple of different of them that has been very helpful and strain finders of those strain finders and like i have restorative as one of my strengths if you're restorative you're you're moved by brokenness and broke and problems but then your problem is also that you always think there's a problem hmm. so that gives me a reference for self-reflection uh, but honestly like in the end it's 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 learning to talk to jesus about things and learning to talk about your emotions with Jesus 
and learning to to bring your thoughts to Jesus and allowing him to speak into that. So when I feel a lot of things or I feel insecure or I, I feel I left a meeting and there's a bit of conflict or I feel unsettled, I would spend time in prayer and I would be like, Jesus, just increase these emotions. Help me to, to discern these emotions. Mm. What is true about these emotions? What is not true about what's happening? And, and like, I go through that process a bit rather than just putting on Netflix or kind of just trying to move on, but just pause and, and reflect over it. And I found that very helpful, particularly when there's a series of, difficult meetings that we're having over time mm -hmm. yeah no that's good so with that you're basically saying also just sit, sit in the tension i mean mm -hmm. i know you love that word that's one of so so maybe actually what is it that you love about tension and i think self-awareness and i was thinking even uh, you have to be a bit fearless um mm -hmm. in um in actually allowing yourself to look inward to say what 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 is actually going on or what is actually going on in this tension, where it would be easier to turn on Netflix, right? Yeah. You know? um, I mean, I, I think it's it's like, it, I think what happens when we we get when we get safe in Jesus, when we really get to know God, we don't have to self preserve. And I think good self-reflection and good and holding tension, you need to not have this deep subconscious urge to preserve yourself. Mm. And that has been a prayer for a long time and that I pray regularly that like, God, let me not protect myself, but allow you to protect me. Yeah, mm. it's good. Uh, and of course, there's some boundaries in there. And like, I, I do this, but the ironic thing, those boundaries, I think usually comes when you don't have to self-protect. Um, and, and the boundaries doesn't come out hard and rigid. They come out kind of like, oh, I'm, I'm just, I'm tired. I, I just can't give you anything, even though if I wanted to, so I can come, you know. Um, but but I really think it's it's it comes from a place of intimacy with God and a, and a revelation that... God, God got, got my back. So I can courageously sit in the unknown because that's what tension is. Like I, I can courageously sit not knowing where this stance will lead me or this stance will lead me and just be like, okay, I'll sit in this. Or daring to say, God, reveal the broken parts of myself or reveal the worst parts of myself because I know that you love me anyway. So it really shouldn't matter what comes up. Um, so yeah, you can't get away from the simplicity of it. That's it, it's our intimacy with Jesus. Mm -hmm. So good, yeah. And, but the ironic thing is, you also won't go there unless you go to a place where you might get hurt, or where you can't self protect. So we can fear again. I think we we tend to theorize as Christians too, because oh, ooh. but then when it happens, we kind of like we don't want to engage with God because then we kind of just blame it as. A spiritual attack or i'm mm. hurt or this is traumatic or whatever else we we want to label is that rather than the opportunity that it is right yeah no. it reflects on our view of, of god yeah how close or maybe how safe or yeah and how, how much of a lord and father mix he is in our life yeah and if we really believe god is the, the one that provides everything like Mm. Why should I be worried? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Awesome. Where are we, Caleb? I think you know, I just got kind of sidetracked here. <laughs> that's good. I, I love it when when it becomes organic and that. Uh, yeah, me too. Um, we have um, a couple more. One of the, th the questions and one of the thoughts is... Um, I think a good leader is um what was is is somebody who's who is aware of the reality that they're in. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Um versus a high, you know, sometimes we can get people who are too idealistic, others who are too pessimistic. And you know, and how to define the the reality of of where we are. Um 
and and to allow your personal self as 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 a leader there too. And it comes back to this this thought process that we were just talking about of um where is Jesus seated in in that process? Where is our awareness? Um, how um have you have you had instances in your leadership already where you you have had to do this and and how has it produced fruit where you really had to define okay this is the reality whether it's discipleship with an individual or a leadership situation um and how that has produced fruit um of bringing reality from a good heart as in like just just to so it's it's like how to gain how you gain perspective like appropriate perspective of what needs to happen and stuff like that yeah and and when you've brought that appropriate perspective how has it um been a po powerfully impactful in, in discipleship or moving a community forward um i think i know what you're asking i'll try to give it a go here but i think one thing that i find in discipleship over and over again doing one-on-ones and talking to people is to help it's like when you when you help people to see that their difficulty is not necessarily something to run away from, but rather something to sit in and to ask questions. And like that, that hardship is an opportunity to ask questions. And that challenge is an opportunity to ask questions. That strong emotions is an opportunity to ask questions to yourself. And sitting with people as they go through difficult things, you just be like, wow, that's exciting. That sounds really good. Like in a sense, because usually, Nine out of 10 cases, eight out of 10 cases. Let's make it a bit worse here. Right? <laughs> eight out of 10 cases, like I feel people are actually processing quite well. And you can hear that they're they're going through that pain and they're they're making some realizations. It's just that they're not realizing that they're making important observations. So then having that moment and sitting with them to just be like, do you see? Like this is actually quite healthy, uh, it's quite powerful. Um, and then there are other times where it's just painful and it, it just doesn't, it just doesn't work and that's okay. Like that, then you're saying, yeah, it really sucks. It's also helpful. Um, I mean, there was another, I don't know if this helps too, but I, there was another moment as a leader, I was, we were having some intense meetings about the future and about a group coming and. We had quite a, emotionally speaking, quite a heated meeting, and I got a bit emotional too, which I get at times. But then I was reflecting. Afterwards, just at least me getting emotional in that way was not helpful. And I think we tried to foster an environment where we said, let's be open, let's be real with one another. But saying that versus that being the safe place to do it are two different things. Mm. Like yeah. saying that you're best friends versus if you're actually best friends. There's if there, anything that I see a lot is how we mislabel our friendships and our relationships mm. uh, because we're so eager to label them where I'm just like, I don't know, let's go with the flow, people. <laughs> let's see what happens. Um, but having that perspective or a reflection that no, I was being too emotional or emotional in an unhelpful way. Maybe that's better. <laughs> Emotions are great. It's always, how do you talk about it in a, you know, but emotion in an unhelpful way and just misjudging the trust in that group. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't call one or a single person that wasn't safe. I think like, it was just not, just the recent dynamic yet. And, and just having that reflection. And I just went and apologized to the ones I needed. And then from that moment, I, I've, I've just changed my approach a bit when I go into meetings and just being a bit more like, what do we say that our group is and what actually is our group? Mm. Yeah. No, that's very good. And yeah. not from a place of hurt mm. because that's when it gets a bit sketchy, but mm. rather just like, no, I, I need to reevaluate and, and rework this, what it looks like. Yeah. Was that, a, is that answering the question? Is that what's the... Yeah. Yeah, no, it's good. That um, has asking because uh sometimes self-awareness is can get to a place of dreaming but not reality as well yes self-awareness has to make sense in the context of of reality and 
and again that, that the question about point of reference and we've, we've brought it up with relationship with people um it, there needs to be a, a constant in that so that it's not too no. heavy yeah. and we need an environment of grace in our leadership teams on our campuses like if there's no grace for a person to be awkward or say something weird or be too emotional or say something that is not really rooted in reality. Like if people can't do that without feeling picked up or talked with appropriately afterwards, we will we won't create a safe environment amongst us and we won't grow. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Very good. It's it's like that um yeah between you can say grace and truth, you know, so a community of grace and truth where that's possible to, um, yeah, to live in that tension of both, actually. Just like God, he is 100% merciful, 100% just. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But Johan, you touched on it just before, actually, about uh, personality types. Mm. Talk me about self-awareness. Um, who, who would you say... of personality types you can you can go with whatever disc or my spricks or or whatever do you think there's some winners you know in there <laughs> who are the natural ones that are good at self-awareness that are not naturally self-aware you would say and who are the ones that really need it you know <laughs> yeah yeah exactly, exactly. Those number eights on the enneagram people they'll say it <laughs> yeah it's kidding it's kidding uh, i don't know actually i think it's a good question um I mean, I think any any personality type that encourage high EQ, if I'm going to keep it really broad without calling one one individual out, because I think anyone can have high EQ, but I think any personality type that produces naturally higher EQ would, would probably be more reflective and, and more mm -hmm. self-aware. Um, I don't know not enough about Enneagram, for example, to say like, but but I know number nines, like I'm a number nine, I'm a peacemaker. So because I want to keep the peace, there will be a, a natural drive within me for understanding to keep that peace. Mm. Where maybe a number eight on the Enneagram is more of a challenger and they, they don't care about peace as much. Maybe they just wouldn't reflect over that natural, like they wouldn't have the same drive to figure that out. But then again, we all have different life experiences and we all have different backgrounds that affects those things and balances those things out. Yeah. But yes, I mean, if you do screen finders, there are definitely people that, that will be more prone to self, self reflection than yeah. others. Yeah. Absolutely. But it can be learned to some degree, you would say? Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, <laughs> everyone. I mean, this is also, this is why I don't like personality types. It's like when, mm -hmm. when Jesus or when Paul writes about the fruits of the spirit, mm -hmm. kindness, gentleness, hospit uh, hospitality, blah, blah, blah. Like there was no personality types referred to when he did that list. So I'm like, I don't care who, what personality type you are. You are to be generous. You mm -hmm. are to be kind. You are to be unconditional in the way that you approach love. So as long as it doesn't trump as long as it doesn't make you passive in pursuit mm -hmm. of of who jesus calls us to be as human beings go ahead with the personality test yeah, right. yeah. so then uh, that excuse of the off the table <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> then uh you know there's a question we always ask and here comes johan mm. do you have a juicy mistake that you want to share with us even in this realm of um, uh, of self awareness uh, that you have made. I probably, do. I probably have several. Yeah. Uh, this one, I didn't come this far when I processed beforehand. Um, <laughs> I've done major mistakes. I mean, I've definitely done a lot of medium mistakes. You know, I don't know, like just. Uh, this is some something that comes up regularly that I think we do is that we overanalyze through self-awareness how we are to approach a person or a situation and rather than kind of just engaging in the conversation and just do it we yeah. kind of just analyze it because oh, we don't want to hurt this person we want to do this properly we want to do this with the right procedures we don't want to crush a person we're not la 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 and and doing all that without the actual person 
or without the actors. I've done that over and over again, and it's never been a fruitful thing. Mm. Um, and rather just unhelpful, and I have regrets, I guess. I've learned from it and just be like, no, it's, it's better to be more savage with wisdom, but, and involving the actual people that you're talking about. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I don't have any other major that I can think of that's really juicy. Do you need help? Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, you guys worked on the same leadership team together, didn't you? <laughs> Stovo was wanting to help be help be self aware. <laughs> it's like no. Um, no, that's good. I I think it's uh, it's a it's a topic that um is rather um individual as much as it is um broad. And, and uh, a key element to, yeah, fruitful yeah. Um, ability to live in community, work in teams. And um, yeah, I think it's something that we need to be more mindful of, especially um, when we're not um, working in team. I think it's it's beautiful for us as why we're moving to, you know, everybody's in a different place and moving to this journey of what does the team leadership look like? But I, I know for me, the most... <laughs> Um, effective way um, of me being self-aware in the things I'm good and, and not so good at or the things I need to work at um, has been that element of community has yeah. been of, um, of of being and working within team and so um, I'm glad that, that that was pointed out early on in this conversation because it's I think as well oftentimes conversation can be very individualistic as well how do I improve myself um and you always want to come away from the instagram yeah of help where it's yeah. like it's not about improving you for the sake of you exactly it's about you becoming more self-aware to become your true self that god has made you so you can be fruitful and benefit others and i yeah. think that's that's a big difference yeah or it makes a big difference in the end yeah. and that's Actually, the a little bit a little bit like parker palmer saying that the end goal of, of education is love yeah. Yeah. Isn't it him saying that? You know, sure. so that is education is not just for me, you know. Yes, I'll grow in it, but it's for other people. Um, yeah, yeah. so that's it's a generous, generous self-awareness, I guess. In yeah, this yeah. Context, yeah. Sorry, I broke uh, you're saying, Caleb. No, no, it's good. I think we're coming to a close, and I think yeah. it's a, it's a topic that our communities um should be talking about, especially like you just said, we're in an Instagram world right now. The next generation of people that are coming are probably even more self-aware because of where we are in history with technology, with everything being um, accessible, um, and as well, the, the digital age, everything that we um, are doing nowadays is, there's eyes upon it, and it, it, it calls us for yeah. a greater sense of fear of the Lord. And if we're aware of that, man, the, the fruit that can come out of it yeah. um, is, can only be good. Johan, I we thank you for your time. We we're curious, is there a book that you're reading as we as we draw to a close um, yeah. that you would recommend to people right now in your yeah. leadership or in your development? Yeah, let me say two things. But one thing, first, just also on the self-awareness as leaders, I think you always carry a bigger burden to become self-aware as a leader and you need to work harder on others' feedback because the more power points you have, the less prone people will be to talk to you so uh, but anyway i think a book i am reading the other half of church right now uh i can't recommend it yet because i haven't come that far i've read maybe one or two chapters but that, that's what i'm reading at the moment um i personally like if you want to read book that helps you with self-awareness i, I love uh, david benner he has a triple series surrender to love gift of being yourself and desiring God's will. And I feel all three of them kind of touches on this area of becoming our true selves and understanding what that means. Um, yeah. And I think he does it beautifully without compromising on, on he does it in a elegant way without compromising on the reality of it and on the Bible. But it's, yeah. he's a Christian psychologist, I think, or something like that. I love those books. I think they're really good. Nice.
I have not heard of them, so I will need to yeah. look into them. Self is on, on identity and self-awareness, and it does it without it becoming about you, which yeah. I think almost all other teaching on identity and self-awareness does. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. You'll probably load the books on onto Facebook, so also they'll be visible there. Yes. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, we are coming to an end. If you have come this far and you're watching, thank you for continuing on and watching. Uh, some good nuggets there to pull out um, from from this conversation and and, and Johan's um, life and experience. But uh, we're coming to an end of a year. I encourage you guys to read um, the different articles and the different resources that there are from this um, this month's topic of um, the art of reflection and self-awareness. Um, and uh, we'll be back next year. And I hope next year that you can as well find yourself a beanie so that you can join us um, in wearing a beanie. Maybe perhaps we should change the name of these uh, leadership. Yeah, movements. I may have to change. I'll, you'll have to teach me how to put it on right. You just need the right hat too. That's just not the right hat, right? It's not the right it's, hat. It's, it's a cool hat. No, anyway. Hillary, anyway. We'll, yeah. we'll talk about this. We'll talk about this. <laughs> you have Thank podcast. you. Johanna, Thank you. And, that podcast. Yeah. and we look forward to having you on the other side again, Johan. But you did great on this side of the table as well. Thank so, you. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Nice for now. Ciao.